I wish you could all stand here. And the first thing actually I want to invite you is just turn around and look who is in the room. <laughs> you, all of you, are the leaders who created tomorrow. We don't know yet how tomorrow will look like. We do know it's different. We heard this this morning in several amazing presentations. This, oops, where's my picture? <laughs> I also would like to ask you, if we don't know the future, I think many of us do know. Who here in the room is a parent? Please raise your hand. Oh, that's more than a half. I do think every one of you knows the future because you see this future in front of you every day. And so I today want to talk about evolutionary leaders. We heard a lot about larger organizational ideas, but at the end it all comes down to us, to me and to you, how the future will look like. And the evolutionary leadership in my opinion, in my research, is the only way we really can go. At the end, leadership, we know, is not a position anymore. Leadership is a mindset. And it shouldn't be driven by your personal benefits, but by the greater good and the generations we see in front of us every day. So, my second home is Silicon Valley. And it was just a month ago we came back to Germany, where we are constantly live, and I find myself in the middle of a huge crowd with exciting parents and smiling, exciting, toothless smiles of the little ones. I'm sure you had experiences too. And in this moment, a lot of things for me, for me changed because it hit me so hard that I was thinking about the importance of time and really how we create the future our little children will grow up in. We know our world is expanding exponentially. Everything is possible. We are excited and carried away by what is possible today. It looks like we are creating a seamless world where technology is our partner in every sense. We create smart cities and we create smart hubs. We have smart applications and smart devices. But do we really need to give a mattress this power of knowing better when it's time for us to get up? We do know that we give up our steering wheel. And I do have to confess, as a German, it's still really hard to imagine. <laughs> but we do know it's coming. And we do this to, on one hand, create safer roads, but also to have more time to focus on higher efficiency. So when we do that, I really can just ask again and again why we are not getting a grip on the true problems we are facing we can create a seamless world why we are still seeing pollution, a lack of clean water. We are still seeing distraction, unhappy people in the workforce, and still we see wars happening which divides us instead of unites us. I clearly don't want that my child grows up in this world. And I think we all agree we need a new leadership. How does the leadership look like? We ask a lot of questions. What is the solution? Do we know the solution now? We went through several revolutions. The industrial revolution, which made the mechanical production possible. Many things we are doing right now are based on that revolution. Eight hours working day. Waterfall leadership. We went then into a more precision-oriented revolution. Kaizen. Probably everyone worked with Kaizen and TQM. 
And then we went into the third industrial revolution. And that revolution was driven by the exponential innovation we are seeing right now. Entrepreneurs are driving this, computers are driving this, and automation is driving this. So what is now the fourth industrial revolution? Some call it the knowledge revolution. Others call it the cyber physics system with artificial intelligence and everything that's possible there. But I do believe that in history, looking back of today, I would like that we say this is a revolution of wisdom because we looked at our Mother Earth and learned from biology, which we heard this morning, the ferns who are so smart, the way how nature is organized, how we live together actually shows us how it all can work. And for that, we need a deep, deep wisdom where computing and artificial intelligence is great because it helps us to concentrate on really, really true problems we have to tackle. And for that, I say we need evolutionary leaders. They only have one perspective, and that is was this little human being will grow up in. We can't let boardrooms and governments, the power centers of our world, be driven by personal benefits. The smart solutions we see right now are also needing smart decisions. And as I mentioned before, I think it's great to see innovation. My second home, Silicon Valley, is full of it. It's great what's happening there. It's good we have tools such as Scrum and design thinking and Kanban and open space. But at the end, it's about the new matrix we have to um, create. And we spoke about this in the morning before. The KPIs we have today are not working for this new system. So we need these evolutionary leaders who actually really create a new matrix, create new new KPIs, who are behind that. And it's really shocking sometimes when you go in Silicon Valley to a startup event. Entrepreneurs are hyped. Everyone needs to be a startup. But if the startup doesn't put attention to the right decisions, it doesn't matter what they create. We just create more and more, but not the really true problems we tackle, which we have right now. So if you are at the startup conferences and you see these amazing young talents, what they are missing is actually maturity. And maturity comes, and we've heard that before, if you put care to everything you do, and as Achim said, also putting love into that. I know we are a little bit before the lunch break, we heard so much about the head, and Achim was so great to bring this back to the heart. And now bring it back to your stomach, which is not hopefully hungry for food, but also hungry for a new solution where everyone can really be happy and playful. And as Suzanne showed us, playing in a sandbox, which is not triggered by pollution and the war next door. And so please, please, evolutionary leaders, Step up and get into not just smart devices, but also smart choices. And many of you might have seen this because I'm sure you went through a lot of development programs as a leader from Harvard Business, which is called the seven stages of leadership. This is a crucial matrix to look at because an evolutionary leader developed He's not just born into it. He went through different understandings. It's a little bit if you face a death. You have to go through certain, to several stages to really get over this warning of losing someone or losing something. And this is the same here. Usually what happens is the entrepreneurs stop at the achiever level. They didn't go higher. And here, with uh, Harvard Business, they call it the alchemist. The alchemist is the highest form. 
So in different situations, you bring in different methods, you bring in different decisions, you bring in different people. And the question was asked before is like, how do I deal with that in a large corporation? Can I really in one second suddenly go open space? Maybe you can, maybe you cannot, but just don't ask that question. You need to do it. And during you do it, you learn it. There is not one answer right now. The only thing we know, we have to change the status quo. It cannot continue as it does. Everything is breaking down. We see that right now. Environmentally, um, politically, religious, everything is on a stand to really check if this matrix we created can continue that way. Maybe you have to do it right here. Maybe you have to do open space right now everywhere. Maybe you have to plant seeds. But don't hold back and do it. And do it with the alchemistic leadership and as an evolutionary leader, go a little further. Every decision you make, you have to check with your gut if that decision is made for the next generation and not just for the greater good and for the good of the company or yourself. We talk also about the evils. And I believe there are no evils. Every person in the ground wants the same. They want to be loved and they want to be respected. But they got wounded on the way and they need even more the consciousness, which is so crucial, really reflecting on it. So an evolutionary leader, after going through different stages of development, also encompasses seven capabilities. First of all, he and she is extremely courageous. And courageous also means sometimes tough love. When you're a mother, when you're a parent, you know that. You always love your child. And sometimes you have to be with tough love presented because you keep them safe. But also, you need to be courageous to do the next step. Don't stop. Don't wait till someone shows you the way. You know the way. Also, continuously, Going this path, you look at a Steve Jobs, at an Elon Musk, they got kicked out of their own companies. You know, like there is a barrier sometimes you have to overcome, but please is long away and continuous away. Don't stop it and always reflect on it and bring it further. Be confident in what you do. Don't question yourself too much, but Bring it back to your own awareness. At the end, it comes back to you. That's where the work starts right now. The work doesn't start with putting in a scrum or design thinking method. The work starts with reflecting who you are. Are you driven just by fight and flight? Are you driven by your old stories to learn when you grow up? It's really hard to make money. People are evil. I cannot do this, I'm a girl. You know, we have tons of biases in our head and towards the outside. If we have these stories in our mind, how can we even react to someone else? So consciousness and learning about yourself is so crucial. Also, because human hacking is getting further and further. You know, soon an implant in our head will tell us what we need to think and what others think. Don't you want to be really driving your own personality forward instead of being hacked by computers? We have to put the smart, smart wisdom we have as human beings in these developments of technologies. And neighbor, uh, next to an IQ and an EQ and an LQ, there's a physical intelligence too. There's an environmental um, intelligence too. There's even spiritual intelligence to bring it all in and evolve as an evolutionary leader. Obviously, compassion, which goes along with love, and have compassion to yourself. We can't fail. I'm coming out of a culture where failing is not accepted. In Germany, we don't fail. We run like the Swiss clock on precision. But we are actually all human. We do fail. 
We failed in parenting, we failed in driving school, we failed in school. You know, there's many things. It's okay. Just, you know, don't do this mistake a second time. Learn from it and go again and exchange with others what you can learn out of it. Curiosity goes hand in hand with creativity. And Tobias uh, mentioned this so beautiful. The art of an artist. Bring that in. Start the morning. You don't know how the day unfolds. Start with being open what comes. Always be courageous about what did you mean with that? Can you elaborate a little bit more of it? How are you right now? Being open and curious what is there. You will learn so much on the way and something totally new unfolds on that. The canvas we have in front of us, the future, we have to paint and we don't know how it looks right now. And at the end, obviously, it's a collective because we all don't do it alone. We can all only do it together. And bring it back to parenting, there's this beautiful saying, a child needs a village to be raised. That is the perfect idea. And if you look at science, in the first two years of development, actually an African child is developed developed most forward because the whole village takes care of the child. The little siblings, the cousins, another mother. And it's not as isolated in other, such an other culture, um, such in Asia, where a child gets totally separated, as an example. So these are the seven capabilities we have to think of to create this collective work <coughs> where everything has a place. And here again, we can learn from nature. If it's bees, or ants, or birds, or termites, they know that everyone in this system is important and has a role. And they follow different ways. It's not always the same person, right? In birds, when you see a flock of birds and they fly, they change who is leading the front in different occasions. And here it's exactly the same. But only together we can do this. So, bring it to the point again, we need to shift today you all, we all, the work, how we get together. We need to bring it from profit to impact and that your success is defined by the significance how you show up. San Francisco, our second town, is creating a lot of shock. And Doug and I were talking about it, how the city of transformation transformed. Everyone is looking right now to Silicon Valley because of technology. But it is a place for many, many, many hundreds of years, a place of transformation. Right? The gold rush, looking for something better. Also, the women's movement, the peace movement, it all established in Silicon Valley and San Francisco. But what we do see right now is the latest picture where the city of San Francisco is planning a four-level, fully equipped, great technological solutions in it with a park. Even outside, we have a lot of beautiful nature. And you drive around and on every corner you see a tent for homeless people. Is that really what we want that the most advanced innovation hub is creating? And we see it again and again. The waste from Silicon Valley and San Francisco <coughs> will swap to Europe, they will swap back to America, and they will swap to Asia. I don't want that. I don't want that I see millions of homeless people on the street. I was 19 when I moved the first time to California. I had not seen in Germany a homeless people. There are some beggars, but everyone had a home. I was shocked. When I drive now into San Francisco, I am crying. Cause it's really horrible to see that teachers, nurses, people in the shop have not even the chance to live in this city. It's the most expensive city today, more expensive than Shanghai or New York. So for the future, 
bring it back to the kids. Whatever you do, let's create an environment which is not just seamless and smart, but also healthy. And I ask you to put every decision into the right hands as an evolutionary leader so we can all thrive in the future and in the long future for our next generation. Thank you.